Get your medieval geek on with Shadowversity t-shirts. Available through Teespring. Link in the description. Shadowversity. Ratings, I'm Shad, and in this video we'll be looking at the best historical slash medieval slash realistic weapons for a fantasy creature. And so in this episode, we will be looking at merfolk. Merfolk, merfolk, you know, mermaids, mermen. So, merfolk, classic fantasy creature. Now, I won't be going into the history or origin where they're from, but, but because they're, the way they look is fa fairly well established, you know, half human, half fish. And uh, we can rightly assume also in uh, different uh, movies, TV shows, literature and whatnot, where they're portrayed, the uh, human half certainly seems to have human levels of strength. So their physical characteristics are not going to be too confusing in that regard, but their environment switches things up completely because of course the merfolk's main environment is, well, water. Before we get into the nitty gritty of how their environments and how they move and stuff will affect the best kind of weapon suited for their characteristics, physical characteristics, you know, we need to look at what weapons are usually classically ascribed to them. And as I think about, you know, reflecting back on different uh, stories and stuff, uh, also not only stories like role playing games and things that feature mer folk and stuff, a weapon does kind of appear as one that is generally classically ascribed to them, and that is the Trident. And a classic, of course, King Triton. So there's that kind of connection, and then in extension to that, that seems to be the classic weapon for them. So why is the Trident associated with merfolk? Well, it's interesting. In terms of spear fishing, the Trident is a tool that is used for that, because it has three prongs. Instead of one, you know, spiky pointy thing, it has three, which is very useful when you're trying to hit small things like fish, okay? Fish can be very fast in the water. And so, of course, you'll have a much greater chance in skewering them if you have three areas of hitty, pointy, stabby stuff than one. So yes, tridents become far more useful in regards to spear-like fishing uh, than just a single spear by itself. And this is why the trident didn't become as prevalent, in my opinion, okay, this is, uh, this is a subjective opinion now, why the trident didn't come as uh, prominent, okay, as a battlefield weapon than the spear. Because with the spear, a, a battlefield weapon, you're going to be fighting people, even in a fantasy setting, you'll be finding people of human-like size. So there's a much smaller chance of you missing the target than in regards to trying to skewer something small. So that, combined with the fact that making a triton is actually more difficult, okay, more uh, uh, blacksmithing involved, spear is all you need. You're good to go. So then, with the triton being associated with the sea as a means to kill fish, would then the merfolk use it? Well, it's interesting because it depends. Uh, there are certain, you know, fantasy settings and whatnot where uh, uh, merfolk do not eat fish. They consider it cannibalism. Uh, I, I don't really see too much fish. Of course, a merfolk could eat fish if they want uh, because that's probably the most plentiful food source they have, apart from seaweed, maybe. And yes, it is common for tools to be adapted into battlefield weapons throughout history. But the thing is though, uh, the Triton was still prominent for humans above land and uh, because of the same issues I described that uh, you're hitting much larger targets in actual, you know, real life battle, the Triton really wasn't adapted completely into combat. Now remember, of course, there was cases where the Triton was used, you, you, the gladiators for instance, the Tritons appeared there and I'm sure there are other cases where the Triton appeared, but in terms of prevalence, like what was the pick Triton over spear, spear has won out. And so for the fact that uh, the spear won out on land, I think for the merfolk when they're fighting things of comparable size to themselves, maybe large sharks, other merfolk, uh, that would be the case as well. A triton isn't necessarily any better than a spear for things of larger size. So then what would be their most primary best weapon for them? And this is where we need to now go back to considering their environment because they live in the sea. But I always want to convey in these, you know, fantasy creature things as to what weapons they would be fighting against humanoids. And which is interesting because a uh, merfolk isn't a humanoid. So when they try and fight humanoids, they are in a different environment than their normal environment because humans can't survive under the sea without external forms of help, magic or technology. 
but we yeah safely say uh, underwater is not the na native human environment for combat. So if a merfolk wants to fight a human, it's actually going to be on the surface of the sea and the humans are going to be on boats or rafts or whatever, which is going to change up the type of weapons they would feel would be best to fight humans as the type of weapons they would more commonly use just underwater. So first of all, I'll talk about underwater. And the biggest thing about being underwater, and something that a lot of people miss, is that uh, ranged weapons do not work well underwater. Okay, the myth that you see in movies where someone dives underwater and you see the bad guys with the machine guns going da 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 da, shooting the you know bullets in the water, and then you see the shot under the water, the hero swimming, and the bullets are zipping by with these long bubbles. That is bullcrap. Okay, absolutely impossible. Mythbusters actually did a great uh, uh, episode where they tested this, where not only did they fire regular handguns, they got one of the most powerful rifles they could get to fire into the water, and the bullet only penetrated like half a meter to a meter before being completely stopped by the water. Water actually has incredible stopping power in regards to bullets. Now, that's not to say that there aren't type of range weapons that ha can work underwater, like harpoons and, and stuff, but harpoons are kind of engineered in a different way and if we're working with medieval level technology it is much harder to develop an effective ranged weapon that will work at any you know significant distance. Water creates a lot of drag and so because of that not only is ranged weapons going to be affected as well any weapon that has a large-ish kind of surface area is going to be the worst to try and use underwater because of the drag that you know be like trying to hit through well molasses water but yeah, it'll be really restricted. So that puts things like maces and war hammers and maybe even axes, because axes have a fairly long shaft, but axes less so, that would make them far less effective. Shields would also be very difficult for uh, merfolk to use. Now in swimming, if they want to be able to, you know, cut through the water with any level of speed, they'll need to hold the shield forward at front of them. And having a curved shield would be even worse because it would be like, when I say curved shield, I'm talking about a shield that has a curve in its body. That would make things even more difficult. So they would need a shield that's straight that they could, you know, angle in front of them in a straight line to cut through the water. And maybe it's funny that could actually help them steer uh, because it will act like a fin. But as soon as they hold it flat on, it would make swimming through the water really difficult. So I'm not sure how effective a shield would be for merfolk underwater. Then looking at swords, swords also have an issue because of their striking area, the full length of their blade, that entire blade would be dragging through the water, creating, which would cause a lot of resistance, reducing the power in the strikes considerably. Now, swords are thin, so there'd be a level that they can cut through, don't get me wrong, but the less surface area you have cutting through the actual water, the more power you would be able to put into the strike, which then makes, in my mind, spears the absolute best pick because unlike a sword which has you know even though like i said the sword is sharp it still has a bit of length that then that whole length you're cutting through the water right a spear when you put forward only has the tiniest little bit actually cutting through the water i, I hit my uh mic hope it didn't make static and so a spear because of this would act its effectiveness and the power that you'd be able to put behind the thrusts would be affected far less in water as opposed to other weapons which would make in my mind spears the best pick for merfolk as their primary weapon. And it's hard to think of any other weapon that would uh, be kind of the second pick. So I think the sword, maybe, I mean, I haven't gone under the water to test actually how much resistance the water creates in sword strikes. But the great thing about swords is that uh, you don't necessarily need heaps of power to do damage. I'm, you know, hear me out when I say this, because of course force and striking has uh, massive things in regards to uh, doing damage. But if you're even able to place the blade of a sword on your opponent, you could do massive damage by pulling it back or pushing it forward in either a push or a draw cut. So in that style of fighting, it's not necessarily hitting with power, it's just connecting with your opponent and then doing the cut. Now in regards to this style of combat, there is a type of sword that would assist these type of cuts massively, and it's curved swords. Cur swords, you know, you know, big curved swords. So I'm talking about you know, uh, tolwars, shamshirs and things. You know, the scimitar family of swords. They would work really well for this 
push and pull cutting style. So yes, you know, you wouldn't be able to get heaps of power, but the merfolk, once they get the, the uh, touching, bang, just push and they could do devastating cuts. Same with pulling. So I think the next best pick for them probably would be a sword because it can cut through the water to a much better level than other types of weapons with larger surface area. And then as to the type of sword, a one with a big curve, not a slight curve, big curve. So that is underwater combat, but what about the type of combat they would need to employ when fighting humans? Which is not, I'm not, above water kind of implies on, on land, and of course merfolk have a bit of trouble on land. But I'm talking about, when I say surface, surface of the water. So their spears and scimitar-like weapons could still be used to an extent, but there is something that's uh, very evident about th this combat. And that is their environment, their natural environment, is lethal to humans. So they can survive in a human-like environment, just being in the air above water. Uh, but as soon as they get out of the water, they're in trouble, of course. But under the water, eh, humans will not fe fare well for, th for them. So it's not really a matter of getting in close and stabbing the human through the heart or chopping his head off or anything like that. Uh, the merfolk can employ something uh, far more efficient and safer for them to take on these humans. Give them a grappling hook and rope. All they have to do is hook a human, grab him, and drag him underwater, and he is stuffed. So yeah, they can stay at a far safe distance from the humans that they're fighting, and so they don't need to go up close to the boats or anything like that. And, and it's and funny, right? The humans then would have to rely on ranged weapon to try and fight these merfolk. And a merfolk has to just go underwater for a meter or two, and they're perfectly safe from arrows and everything. And then they just have to pop up for half a second, throw their grappling hook, hook a human, yank! The human's dead. Now I say grappling hook over net because nets are a bit harder to work with. Uh, they can also get tangled and, and there's a danger because nets and fish, they don't really work well together. In fact, nets are made to you know, capture fish, of course. So I'm not sure merfolk would really like nets too much because there's a much higher chance of them getting caught in it themselves. Uh, don't get me wrong, the net would be useful above water if they can you know, not get tangled in them and then throw it on humans. Uh, there's a much higher chance of them actually snagging someone in that regard and then grabbing, pulling underwater. But I think a grappling hook, because it has nice, you know, nasty metal prongs to dig into the flesh, that has a much higher chance of actually grabbing someone and less chance of being tangled or stuff like that than yank dead. And of course merfolk would be able to engineer some type of rope with their seaweed or other type of fauna that exists underwater. Now of course the counter that you might assume to this is as soon as you see the grappling hook thrown above or onto the boat that you grab it and then try and yank the grappling hook and pull the merfolk out of the water onto the boat. And that could work, but the easy way to stop this is just to anchor the grappling hook at something underneath the water, like a big rock or a big piece of coral or something like that. And that will prevent a counter pull by the humans on the boat. And that makes it even more dangerous if they attach a solid weight to the other end of the grappling hook. As soon as the human is, uh, you know, hooked, they just drop the weight and let that sink down and pull the human human down with them. So yeah, that is it. Best weapon for merfolk to use above water is actually a grappling hook and rope. Gee, that's scary. Can you imagine it? Like like humans on a boat and they hear I don't know, they f a sign of merfolk in the waters ready to attack them. They, they, like, they would pack themselves because how can they fight them on the, from on top of their boats? The merfolk just stay safe underwater. And then, so you're looking, you can't see, you look one, you go over there, but then it goes underwater, and then you're stuck looking in that direction, and suddenly a grappling hook flies out of the darkness, grabs you over the shoulder, rips you off the boat, and pulls you underwater where you drown to death. That's horrifying! And how could you fight it? Stay away from the water! Don't tick off merfolk, okay? So there you go. These have been my picks for the best medieval weapons for merfolk. That is mermaids and mermen. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed and I hope to see you again. Until that time, farewell.